Hey loves, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be empties. What are empties? Empties are things that I have used up. So, you know, I got a little bit of experience with these products. They're all hair products. I'm going to rate them from one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best would repurchase. It is amazing, you should try it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I feel like when it comes to hair products, sometimes you gotta go through the whole thing to get your true, true, true 100% review on it. And so I'm here to bring that to you. Let's go. The first product, this Aunt Jackie's Flaxseed Don't Shrink Elongating Curl Gel. This is a clear gel. I have been using it for a long, long time and I have finally used it up. I typically use this gel for washing goes. Now, if you are new to my channel, you may or may not know. I had been on a journey for a very long time trying to figure out how to do a wash and go on 4C hair. And this was one of the two products that I tried in the very beginning. I also use this to slick up ponytails. It's a great product. And you know, if you are doing no butter, no oil, high quality stuff, maybe this doesn't fit the bill, but I'm here to say that it worked well. I can use it to swoop down some, some hair in the front to lay some edges um, here in the front if I need to, as long as I use something to tie it down for about 15, 20 minutes. I can use it to slick up a bun. I have used it on wash and goes. In terms of its ability to to hold the coil when I do wash and goes, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. It's currently retailing for about seven bucks at Target and I feel like it was really well worth the price. It lasted me for a very long time. So I am going to give this, I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. The reason why I'm not gonna go any higher than that is because I don't feel like it elongated any of my curls, any of my coils. I got the same shrinkage as I get with any other gel. So I feel like the elongating part, eh, no, I feel like that's more in technique than the actual product. So I did not feel that it elongated my curls and it wasn't particularly softening or hydrating, which I don't usually expect that from a gel, but I guess from a gel that's not, you know, $3, I would expect a little bit more. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. And yes, I would repurchase. No product has disappointed me in the way this next product has in a very long time. And this is the Aunt Jackie's Curl A La Defining Curl Custard. First things I can say, it smells really good. It has like a tropical citrusy sort of fruity smell to it. I really enjoy the smell. Uh, the consistency itself, is kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a custard. Like you would think of a custard, like a custard pie. So I, I think that the, the name of it makes sense. But as far as defining, so let's look at this. It says for natural curls, coils, and waves, and you can use it on wet, dry hair. You're supposed to put it in your hair, massage it through roots to ends. You can even use it on your scalp, as it says and then you can go about drying your hair, air drying or with a tool. So it says, unruly curls and coils meet your match. Aunt Jackie's Curl A La delivers long lasting control and definition to curls, waves, coils, frizzy hair, and braid out. Moisture rich, blah, 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 blah. This is not the product for type four hair if you want to define your curls or coils. It, it, it just, it doesn't work. It just does not do what it says it's going to do for 4C hair. I'm just keeping it 100% real. Could it be like a lightweight moisturizer? Okay, okay. But as far as defining, no frizz, la da da, it did nothing. It literally, I put it on my hair and it was just, it, it just took a nap. It, 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 it laid there and took a nap because it did nothing for my hair whatsoever. I remember it feeling pretty good on. I had put it on damp hair. I tried it on dry hair. It, it does nothing, not, not for my hair type. This was like a waste of seven bucks for me. But I think that if you have a different hair type 
and maybe like maybe the threes or the twos and you want a little bit of definition and you want it to stay bouncy, this might be really great for you. If you're not into gels and you want something flexible, flexible hold, I, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Not for me. This is like a two out of 10 based on the fact that it does not deliver what it's supposed to deliver for coily hair. So this is just gonna be trashed. The Head and Shoulders Royal Oils Moisture Boost Shampoo with Coconut Oil. Now I will make a disclaimer that I did do a collaboration, a partnership with them a long time ago, maybe like a year ago. I've actually partnered with them twice using this product and I can say that I actually like it. Now this is what I use it for. So head and shoulders as a line, most of you know, is geared toward people who have dandruff, scalp issues, things like that. And so this is a dandruff shampoo. The condition I have is seborrheic dermatitis and the active ingredient is pyrethion zinc 1% of it, okay? I use other products that have different kinds of ingredients, but this is the one that I use to maintain. So if I'm having a super bad flare up with my seborrheic der dermatitis, maybe my diet was just crap, <laughs> for a week or two um, and I'm having a bad flare up, this is not it, okay? I have other products for that. But in terms of maintenance, like say if I have a, a couple of spots here and there that I kind of want to clear up and make sure it doesn't get out of control, that's when I use this. It, it has some coconut oil in it. I personally love coconut oil. Um, so I have used this time and time again. Obviously it's empty. I think this is my second bottle of it. Um, I genuinely enjoy using this product. And it's one of the few scalp products that actually still hydrate your hair and doesn't feel it leaving stripped. So this was just a great partnership for me when I when I did do that partnership and I still love the product. I would repurchase or I would yeah, I actually have purchased it since then, yeah. I would definitely repurchase. I would give this an eight out of 10, mainly because it would be really nice if it did like treat my flare up. Like if I could go to this instead of the other product that I go to for my flare up, I would probably give it a 10 out of 10. But because this is more of a maintenance for me, like it don't get down and dirty like my other one that dries my hair out, I would give this, yeah, this is an eight out of 10 for me. Head and Shoulders Royal Oils Water Activated Scalp Scrub with Coconut Oil is my next product. This one kind of falls in the middle for me. Uh, the retail is around $7 and USD. And you know, this was the first scalp scrub that I actually gave a chance to. It is completely empty. And I thought that it was very fascinating, right? It has these little granules to it. Um, it goes in your hair, you use it to scrub your scalp. It actually suds up just like a shampoo and you know, it dissolves with water. I just found it fascinating. I was so afraid when I first used this that it would kind of get caught in my hair in some way because you know, they're little granules. It's like, is it sand? What is it? But no, it's just, it dissolves with water. Um, and it helps to sort of just like get some of that buildup off of your scalp without using your fingernails. So I'm, I'm gonna give it a plus on that. As far as how it actually worked, I feel like it worked, it worked, but it's something that I could live without. I'll just say it that way. The shampoo was enough for me. I didn't feel like I needed an additional scalp scrub, but I would only use this when I was using the shampoo. So maybe I just have to choose between the two. And if I'm gonna choose, I would choose the shampoo. Um, I think with, with scrubs like this, um, you have to be careful with them. In trying to get the stuff off of your scalp, like you could just be too rigorous and think, oh, this is an exfoliator and go crazy. And I feel like there were instances where I went a little bit too hard and it left my scalp feeling a little bit irritated because I was like scrubbing way too hard. I just feel like I personally fall into that trap. So this is not a product that I would purchase again just because I, human error, <laughs> um, can't handle having a scalp scrub because I'd be wanting to really get that stuff off my scalp and I just feel like it can cause more problems for me because of my tendencies. And so I would not purchase this again because of that. The product itself, does it work? Yes. As far as it working, I would give it like a seven. Yeah, I'd probably give it like a seven out of 10, but as far as like my preference for it, 
it gets like a six out of 10. Garnier Fructis Pure Clean Silicone Free Hydrating Conditioner. This is a very inexpensive conditioner. It's like six bucks or so. And it doesn't have any silicone in it, which is very rare for a product to be at this price point. And it works well. So I typically use this on my wash and go weeks or months or however long that stint is gonna be for me. Because here's the thing, wash and goes can be very expensive for type four hair. I don't care what anybody says, they're not cheap. And the reason being is that we have to wash, rehydrate our hair more often than other hair types because our hair just gets tangled faster. It's just a reality of wearing wash and goes for a type four person. Now, if you are someone who only do, does wash and goes and you sort of like reach the point where your hair doesn't get tangled, you have hit the jackpot, okay? But for me, someone who likes doing dry hairstyles and switching on and off a lot, I find that when I go back to doing wash and goes, it's actually more of a hassle than that stint of time where I was doing them like, almost every single week. So for someone like me doing wash and goes, like I have to keep up with doing them every like four or five days, because if I don't, I'm gonna get too many tangles, okay? So I can't wait that long. So that being said, when I need to just do a wash with conditioner, which I do like to do, I need something cheap and reliable that actually works well, that has some slip, and that is this. So in terms of it being the best conditioner I've ever used in the world, it is not. It is not the best conditioner I've ever used. However, it serves its purpose well and I will be repurchasing. This is the one that I go back to. Wash and go season when it comes, this is the one that I gravitate towards because it does what it needs to do. So that being said, the performance of the, sh the conditioner it gets like a seven out of 10 for me. I would say it's like a seven out of 10. Honestly, it's probably more like a six, but because I love it so much, it's like a seven out of 10. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it works well. TPH Make It Rain Hydration Rich Conditioner. <sighs> this was like my biggest confusion. I am confusion with this. I am confusion because I like it. I think it has a decent amount of slip to it. I think that it works pretty well, but the smell is so strong. And I know that I say this over and over again, I literally cannot repurchase it because it smells like, like heavy cologne. Anytime I use anything from this blue line, it smells like men's cologne fragrance throughout the whole house. I can't even wear like like perfume without this interacting with it. So this is, that's the only reason because outside of that, like if you like the smell, the conditioner actually works pretty well. It has a nice amount of slip to it. It has a decent thickness to it. I feel like this is a good product outside of the smell. And it does not seem like she, I don't know. I never heard her say anything about it. She must love it. She created it. You know what I mean? Taraji, that's my girl um, in my head. She's my girl in my head. You know, I really love her as an actress and I'm glad that I gave it a try, but it's just going to be a no for me because of the smell. It's so strong. Oh, it's so strong. If you don't like fragrance, you might get a headache. It's so strong. I have to give this like a five out of 10 unfortunately. The Heritage Day 2 Hair Refresher by Mindy McKnight. I had no idea that she was a YouTuber. I went into like Walmart or Target or something, picked this up, used this specifically for like protective hairstyles. I just think that it just sprays right on, keeps it hydrated for maybe a day, maybe two. The price point is $8.94. I used this for a few months, so I think that it's a pretty good price point for what it is. I personally think it could be a little cheaper. I'm gonna give this, because I would repurchase it, absolutely, I actually thought I repurchased it. I would definitely repurchase this again. I would give this like a six out of 10. Six out of 10 because, well, is that fair? Because it really is only a, a refresher. It does what it's supposed to do. I'm still gonna give it a six out of 10 because I feel like it should be cheaper, but I would still repurchase it. This one's gonna be hard. This is the Bread Beauty Mud Mask 
by Bread Beauty Supply. You can get this from Sephora, you can get this from Ulta, and it's basically a pre-treatment that you put on your hair to soften it, to help you detangle all the things before you shampoo your hair. It retails for, it's in the $35 range. And this is hard. This one's a hard one for me because I love Bread Beauty and I have used so many of their products that are just like 10 out of 10, would repurchase, have repurchased, all of this. And this works so well that it literally makes me angry that it's $35. What is it, 30, right now it's retailing for $34 on Sephora. It makes me so angry because it works, it softens my hair so nicely. I remember being surprised. I remember seeing it and thinking that it was a deep conditioner. And then once I went to use it, I looked at it and it's like, ah, actually it's a detoxifying pre-wash treatment for your scalp and strands. I put it on, honestly, I wasn't expecting much from it because I had tried like a clay mask before, like a DIY kind of clay mask that I use. And I felt like my hair was softened after I washed it off, but the process of putting it on was just like, it was a nightmare, it, like it wasn't a nightmare, but it was just a hassle, right? So I'm thinking, okay, another thing that's gonna make my hair super hard and then I gotta wash it, blah, blah, no. This goes on very smooth and it doesn't dry on your hair. Like it does get a little dry, but not dry to the point where you're like, if I touch it, it might break. It dries down a little bit and it left my hair feeling so soft. I remember being in the shower being like, yo, yo how much is this? Like, because this was sent to me by the brand. I did not purchase this. And I looked at the price tag and I was like, why? Like I literally was just like, why? The reason being, and mind you, I'm not cheap on my products. Like there are certain things that I will spend money on, right? But I only got two full uses out of this. My hair is probably like, maybe like right here, stretched. It's very dense. Some people, maybe it's only one use. I think you're supposed to get quite a few uses out of this, but for my density, this was only two uses. And really, I feel like you, to get two full nice uses, you have to be like, very careful on how much you use. So this was like two uses for me and for $34, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I would continuously repurchase this because of the price tag, but it's definitely like, if you got an event or something like a little special some some. oh, it made me so mad. It really, <laughs> okay, okay. If you like this, let me know. I will see you guys in a few days. I enjoyed this, it was fun. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>